Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Bell. In this video, I'll share how to place linked files into your Illustrator and InDesign layout. Since I'm a cartographer, I'm often thinking about Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign in the way that a map maker like me would. But the good thing is, if you are not a map maker, it's okay. This video is actually applicable to anyone who uses InDesign or Adobe Illustrator. But as usual, I'm gonna be demoing with map examples. Okay, the first thing, what is placing files? In Illustrator and InDesign, when you place a file, it means you bring other files into another other document. So basically you have a document open in Illustrator for example and you want to place a different existing file into that document. You can either keep the placed file linked so basically when you place the file it keeps this link to the original file or you can unlink it and when you unlink it it means you've embedded it. But when you link a file, it means that you can continue to do updates to the placed file, and those updates will be reflected in whatever file that you placed it in. One interesting thing is that a placed file appears in the document that you've placed it into, but that placed file is not the file itself. This brings me to my next point. Why would you want to place linked files into your Illustrator and InDesign documents? The first is file size. One reason that is important to map makers like me is that maps can be pretty large files. They typically have a lot of layers and copying and pasting a ton of unnecessary vector artwork into your layout will bloat your file size. The next reason is organization. You can manage those map layers in that designated Illustrator file that you've placed instead of adding a mishmash of a bunch of different map files. It just makes finding different map layers or layers in whatever if you're not working with maps whatever your Illustrator file is, it makes it a lot easier to deal with them as separate files rather than mashing them all together in one file and trying to find all the layers that you're trying to work with that way. And the final reason that I'll list now, and I'm sure there are others, is editing and updating is easier. If you link a file and edit that linked file, it will be updated in your layout or whatever file that you're placing it in. Right now, what we are looking at is a finished Yellowstone map that I made for the SU User Conference demo. And here's another map. This one is of the North Cascades National Park map that I made for the same demo. I'm going to tell you just very quickly how I made both of these maps and it has nothing to do with placing files. But if you wanted to go ahead and make maps yourselves and are curious about the workflow, I'll tell you in the matter of 20 seconds. I made both of these maps in ArcGIS Pro, which is a GIS software program. Then I exported these maps from Pro as an AIX file, which is an Adobe Illustrator Exchange file format that was developed by Esri, the maker of ArcGIS Pro. The only way these AIX files can be opened is in Adobe Illustrator and only if you have the Maps for Adobe extension installed. And full disclosure, I am part of the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe team. And I'm currently working on a book for this Illustrator extension. I'll look for that in the next year or so. For both of these maps, the Yellowstone and the North Cascades maps have been opened in Illustrator because I have this extension installed. And then I spent some time styling them according to this pretend scenario for the demo that I just told you about. The demo scenario was devised by my co-presenter Julia Olson and myself. And the scenario that we made up was that a science magazine journal called Science Journey World, totally made up name, is doing a special issue focusing on the global 30 by 30 initiative, which is a totally real initiative. It's an ambitious initiative to preserve 30% of Earth's land for biodiversity protection by the year 2030. The United States Geological Survey, or USGS, maintains a database of biodiversity protected status called PADUS, or PADUS, that shows essentially where in the US land is protected for biodiversity or not. A really cool part about the way this status is designated is that it does not necessarily have to be a government owned parcel of land. Even private landowners can maintain land as protected for biodiversity, and many do. So this database has land ranging from private land, state parks, federal wilderness areas, national parks, and more. Okay, back at the Yellowstone map, notice on this map that there is a darker green area in the park and a lighter green area. This lighter green area shows the areas of Yellowstone National Park that are not maintained for biodiversity. So these are the parts of Yellowstone that most visitors see, and they can't be considered maintained for biodiversity because of the infrastructure like roads, shops, restaurants, and certain front country trails that are needed to support all the visitors to the park. But as soon as you venture out of this infrastructure buffer, notice it gets darker green, you get into the areas that are treated as federal federally designated wilderness. This darker green area that is protected for biodiversity is 90% of the total park. Let's look at the North Cascades National Park map. 93% of the North Cascades National Park is federal wilderness, and the areas that aren't wilderness in this park include this generous buffer around the highway that runs through it. It's called Highway 20, or the North Cascades Highway in this part of the highway, and generous buffers around the Skagit River that have three dams ranging from 74 to over 100 years old, and these dams form these lakes that you see here. 
But most of this generous buffer, which is considered national recreation area, is still considered protected for biodiversity. So it doesn't have to all be federal wilderness to support biodiversity. Like I said before, it can even be private land. Another fun fact about the North Cascades National Park, at least I think it's fun, I used to be a park ranger at this park, and I would give campground presentations about the Wilderness Act at night to people who were staying at the campground. Okay, back to the demo. What I'm showing here is the final magazine layout, and this is the document that I'm going to place the files into. This is Adobe Illustrator, but the method that I'm showing here is the same as is InDesign. InDesign has extra features where you can place files into an element they call frames, but I prefer this method that I'm showing here for maps, and the reason for that is that maps are typically designed for a specific size, spatial extent, and geographic scale, and size, spatial extent, and geographic scale are three inextricably linked map properties that to discuss their linkage would require an entire separate video, but for the point of this video, when I first made these maps in ArcGIS Pro, I made them with this final layout size in mind, and I put the required dimensions for each map right here and right here, and that's the size that I started with in Pro. And then I exported them, like I said, then I opened and designed the aesthetic of those maps here in Illustrator, and these dimensions were maintained, which is really nice. The method that I'm showing here in this video does not necessitate any resizing of placed files. With things like logos, graphics, and even some images, resizing is not always an issue. Sometimes it could be, but with maps, it almost always is, especially shrinking the original size of a map. The geographic map scale that a cartographer sets at the beginning of map creation will set the tone for the entire map design phase, and this includes map legibility, which is ultimately the most important part of a map. So that was a really specific explanation for why I prefer this method that I'm sharing in this video. Let's do the actual placing. So for those of you who looked in the video description and said jump to this point in the video for the actual demo, you're going to have missed a lot of uh, background about these maps themselves and how they were created. If you want to check it out, go ahead and start from the beginning. This is how you place a map. The first thing that you need to do is have a layer where you're gonna place the maps. I like to keep these layers separate from all other layers just to keep it really nice and neatly organized. So I create this layer that says place maps here. This is where I'm going to place the illustrator versions of the map. Where you place the layer that you place the maps into, they have to be visible and they have to be unlocked. So I, you just go to the file menu and you go to place. Place. And I'm going to place that Yellowstone finished map right here. So I, just select it and then I click place and then my cursor turns into a nice preview of that map saying where do you want to place me? I want to place it in the upper left hand corner but just to get it super precise I'm going to zoom in and you know just click. Control zero is zoom out. Oh the zoom in keyboard shortcut that I did was alt mouse wheel on a PC and there it is. It placed nicely. The map is exactly the size that I started with when I first created this map, so I didn't have to shrink it or expand it. It's exactly resolving how I want to for map legibility for the people who read this magazine article. Now I'm going to place the North Cascades National Park map. File, place, click place. The cursor has now turned up, turned into that preview of the North Cascades National Park map. I love that. So I'm going to zoom in here, click it there and zoom out. So see how this hill shade is a little too dark in my opinion. The reason why is that in this map right here, the hill shade is a raster image. It has a little bit of transparency to it. So there's nothing beneath that. So because of that, it's taking on the color from these placeholders. So I just turn off the placeholders and let it take on the color of the page, which is not always advisable how you do it because you have no idea what the color will be of the magazine. Let's say they decided to do this special edition in a fancy whatever blue paper, then it would look really funny. So I don't recommend always doing this unless you know the final page is going to be something that makes your map look good. But anyways, it placed, resolved very nicely, it's legible, and that is the method that I love to use. So let's look at placing image files. You go to file, place, and then I'm going to place the Yellowstone finish image, click place, and then my cursor turns into that nice preview. I zoom in for precision, I click place, and then zoom out, and it is perfectly resolved. This is pixels, even though it's pixels, it's the same exact size and resolution that I wanted it to be at the very beginning. So there was no resizing, which is really nice. And I'm going to place the North Cascades image file, file. Remember when I placed that Illustrator file, it had that transparent fill shade layer. And so this color of the light gray right here of the placeholder, it's shown through. And I, in Photoshop, I edited it a little. So I added a white background and then I flattened that white background with the map file. And so the pixels absorbed that white pixelation beneath it, if you will. And so there is no transparency anymore. And that's why sometimes I like to do things by, like edit my Illustrator files in Photoshop before I place them.
So here we go. And place and zoom out so it's not absorbing or showing, <laughs> it's not showing through that placeholder color, even though it's still on. I'll turn it off and click over here so that deselects and there you go. That's how you place files in Illustrator and InDesign, particularly useful workflow for placing maps and layouts. Some people have asked why I don't do a little recording of my face while I make these videos. Sometimes I do, but I don't normally because I don't feel like that's the point of the video. But here's my face, and here's my face, and here's my face, and here's my face, <laughs> and here it is again. Follow if you want to be updated on more Adobe Illustrator tricks, especially for those of you interested in map making. I've started with some After Effects for map making too, so if you're interested, feel free to follow for that too. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And here's my face. <laughs>